Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. still waiting on Tony. So, uh, listen, we're live at uh, Premier Orlando. Thank you very much for Premier Orlando for bringing us in. Um, it's absolutely positively our favorite event that we get to do each year. Um, uh, like I said, Tony's not here. Tony's in Iceland this weekend. So uh, if you uh, if you can DM Tony and, and tell him that he sucks for not being here, please do that. Were you at, Tony? <laughs> Were you at, Tony? Get your ass uh, over here. You could be exactly. in Orlando, but you're in beautiful Iceland. Iceland, I know, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> that voice you hear is Jay Majors. He's our guest star today but we'll get into him in just a sec. We also have two other people at the table today. We have my dear friend Robert Lawrence um, from the uh, Hairdresser Strong Show. I, I always have to slow that down, otherwise I like, I <laughs> like trip over twister. my tongues. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then our other friend Tyler Kelbert from the Salt Lake City uh, Barber and Beauty Expo is here as well. So we're, um, we're so because Tony's not here, we kind of decided that we would do like roundtable conversations and just uh, and just you know cut it up with our, with some of our friends. So uh, that's exactly what we're gonna do. But Robbie, man, how's your how's your day been? Uh, pretty good so far. Um, we checked out uh, Daniel Mason Jones's uh, social media class, and I felt like I was like, whoa. <laughs> so I uh, got a lot from that. So I'm excited to be here and meet Jay for the first time. That's awesome. And Tyler, what's up, buddy? Yes, sir. This is So we have uh, we did a podcast earlier with, with the rules of people there, right? Yes, sir. Carrie and uh, Nick. Nick. Nick, yeah. So they've got that big academy going on up Killing there. It. Killing right? it. They are killing it, right? For real. That's cool. So uh, uh, give a little shout out. When's the expo? So the expo is October 15th and 16th, Salt Lake City, Utah, man. It's going to be dope. And it's Barber and Beauty. Barber and Beauty. We're actually going to have a lot of beauty this year, so we're super, super excited. We've been kind of heavy on the barber side for the first like few years because we're just so connected in the barber industry. But now having more beauty, is, it's going to be cool. That's cool. I can't wait to get up there. And Mr. Jay Majors, man, welcome to the table. Pleasure. Thank you. We uh we we we've, we've wanted to chat you up for a couple of years um and I know Tony's gonna be mad that uh that that he's not in Iceland I know he's gonna yeah, be mad exactly. that he's that he's in we Iceland. Should just show up. Let's all go to Iceland right now, bro. Let's let's just. Where's that guy with the with the plane? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. where is he? Uh, we saw Lexi Lomax and uh the, um uh, uh uh oh god I forget his name now um the guy from Salon Interactive asked her to do a podcast on the plane. She's like, no way, I'm like, no let's way. Let's, let's go get him. him. Let's get up and get let's go get up I, there. We just go get that podcast. Pop in Iceland yeah <laughs> right that'd be all that'd be awesome I have you been to, you no one's been to Iceland nope nope and I'm definitely not on my bucket list either it's not why not I'm good with you I like the ocean I like palm trees <laughs> well there's lots of ocean there it's an yeah. island it's yeah. called Iceland <laughs> an Iceland <laughs> <laughs> I live in Connecticut it's cold enough all right <laughs> right so Jay are you from Connecticut were you born yeah. and raised yeah born and raised in Connecticut Hartford. what city I was born in Hartford, raised in that area. I relocated about 17, 18 years ago. One of the best moves I made. More in southern Connecticut, so it's different atmosphere out there. Different animal. So what's the, what's the difference between the southern and Hartford? Hartford's like borderline central Connecticut. It's the capital. was the insurance capital of the world. Um, a lot of crime and a lot of, to me, a lot of poor um, politicians there that kind of like drain the city. And uh, it's like a city that just can't... We lost the Hartford Whalers. We don't have like a sports team. You know what I mean? Um, just a, it's a it's a rough city. That's just there's been so many revitalization projects and nothing ever panned out. Relocated to New Haven County by accident, where it's actually the home of Yale University, and right? Yale Hospital, and there's several colleges there. So when I you know started barbering in that area, I was able to build a lot of clientele base just off the colleges. We got Yale, Quinnipiac, Southern University, of New Haven. Albertus Magnus. I mean, it's, it's a big college city, so you're busy during school season. But um, that was how I was able to build a lot of clientele for my barbers. How long have you been a barber? I've been barbering on and off since I was 17, going on 18. So, um, what? That's I'm 44 now, so 20 something years. I lost count. Right. I've only been licensed for about 18. But I was like a bootleg barber in the past. 
That's, a, that's the trend, isn't it? Like so many yeah. barbers like start out. I was way. a hair cutter. You know, that's a whole nother podcast. People get mad, like, oh, barbers that went to school don't even cut as good as me, but I'm like, they don't got to run out the back door when the state comes. <laughs> 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 they don't have to act like the sweeper. <laughs> right, right. So. Put down their clippers, pick up a broom. Yeah, there's 19 <laughs> brooms around all the stations. Yeah. There. <laughs> or then put on a cape real quick, like they're waiting for a barber. <laughs> Go sit at the front. I'm a client. <laughs> oh my god, that, that's too stressful for yeah, me, man. For real. You know. And then, did, <laughs> did you have people like call around? Like, I know, like I'm, I'm in a suite, and um, we have like four locations. And as soon as state comes around, it's like people pick up yeah, the phone and like, yeah. hey, hey, state's been around, and like. They're usually pretty good and have a great reputation, obviously, in, in Connecticut. But there's this one lady. She's like the soup Nazi. Like, she's like, she's every. She's a state employee? Yeah, like, so, like, they approve my, I own suites. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you have to add these sinks. So I add the sink. She's like, beautiful. This was two years ago. So last year, we passed her flying colors. This year, she comes in, and she's like, you have to change all the handles on your sink. I'm like. You just approved me and, like, loved my facility, loved my setup. And now I have to call a plumber and change the handles on the sink? I'm like, I just can't win with you, you know? I, I don't know. Maybe this is just there to generate business. Some people just, like, <laughs> maybe she's got it in with a plumber in the neighborhood or something. Yeah, you I don't know. Know. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Some people just, like, they get that little authority in that state or city job, and they, sure. they just have to, like, show you who's the boss, you know? Yeah. Do, you know the, uh, do you know the Stanford study? In the 1960s, uh, Stanford uh, University College, Stanford University, they did a study. What they did is they took they took half the class and they made them imprisoned people. And then, then the other half of the class was um, was uh, like guards or like you know this and like they they wanted to see you know just what the psychology difference was. The prisoners never changed psychology, but it was the it was the 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 the, the guards or the the what the police yeah. that that changed and, and and because of that right, yeah. like their power got got too big. It's a fascinating study. If uh, I'm sure I just messed it all up, but it, that that's ba that's the basis. Yeah, I'm gonna look into that. Study. I got to show that to that lady. <laughs> <laughs> Ask her. Have you ever? You know the Stanford study. Were you study? in that study? <laughs> <laughs> the hell, she definitely was. That's crazy. So, uh, you just came off your big show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Promote that a little exhausted. bit. Uh, Connecticut Barber Expo grew to be the largest barber event in the world. Um, as much as I want to add beauty, then I just become a hair show. Sure. You know what I mean? So I want to be known as the largest barber men's grooming event in the world. Um, and as much as I'm a licensed cosmetologist and a barber, a lot of people don't know that. But uh, Breaking news. Yeah, right. But, um, you know, it, it started in a nightclub. I used to be a nightclub owner, and I used to do this, like, bring your haircuts pre-done with barbers and cosmetologists and, like, rip the runway type stuff. And then I got a bigger location to do uh, your barber's favorite barber. And it was a lot of com competition between all the barber shops. I was like, all right, you think you're the best? And they competed for free, and it was like $20 to get in. And I had one sponsor. It was $50 and a trimmer <laughs> <laughs> and a wrinkled banner. And, um, you know, that same company is paying me double digits to be at my show this year. You know, it's grown to be a massive event. And it's definitely changed the lives of so many people. So that's that's the beauty about it, you know. That's and very, very cool. And you do the LV one. You joined with, with yeah. Jackie this year, too? Yeah, we're back at Las Vegas. We took a big hit in Las Vegas, the COVID, and, and actually had a pending lawsuit with, with the old facility that I was in. Um, they kind of, I won, which they weren't really happy that a, a they little guy from Connecticut beat a casino's lawyer. But yeah. It is what it is. Right. So when is that? Uh, September 17th. Uh, and that that's going to be like the Connecticut barber thing in Las in, Vegas. In Las Vegas, yeah, because a lot of the West Coast brands just it's sad the disconnect between West Coast and like you know there's brands like Suavecito and um like the Gentleman Republics and like these real big West Coast brands. Like Johnny B's is phenomenal product. Mm -hmm. But not a lot of people know about it on the East Coast cuz it's just that that vision in the different hair types like you know there's the greasers and there's you know, old school pompadours in L.A. where in the East Coast is more matte finish and drier textured looks. So different strokes for different folks. So I, I, I wanted to corner the market in the barbering industry. So if I'm on the West Coast and on the East Coast, because pretty much Connecticut pulls everybody. Mm -hmm. Florida, you know, I mean, they pull a lot of West Coast people. So there's some West Coast people that just don't leave the West Coast. Right. You, you meet dudes from L.A., they never step foot in New York and nor do they want to. Right. So, you know, that's been a big draw. Then Floyd Mayweather came the first year, and we've been doing some, some co-branding with the TMT with, with my partner, Jackie. So we're looking forward to, to this year, you know, because there's been big demand for it. That's really cool, yeah. man. 
it's really cool. Like, well, I'm going to start off with like I, I've been to a, a couple of the barber shows, and Jay's always there. Also, I think it's very cool that there's not I don't know if it's competition or whatever, but they're in support. Yeah. You know, there's always support, and you know, I'm, I'm sure Lee shows up at your stuff as well. Yeah, me and Lee yeah. started BarberCon together, believe it or not. Oh, really? Oh, I was his wow. main host. Yeah, I, Lee was my vendor coordinator for Connecticut. And then uh, he helped me out with that for a couple of years. Um, I don't know if he'll get on this podcast in a minute, but I think I taught him a lot. He taught me a lot. <laughs> Lee taught me how to, to get marketing decks in front of big corporations, and I taught him Ooh. how to do the, the organizational stuff. And he kind of realized how much work it is and partnered with a big brand like a company, uh, an event crew. And, uh, you know, so that's me and Lee kind of started that together. That's really cool. The problem, I had to separate from him because Barbara Khan, in the word Connecticut, Everyone was thinking. So they he was mm. getting sponsorship dollars because they thought they were coming to my event oh, and wow. vice versa. It happens to me sometimes, too. Right. They're like, hey, you're the barber con. I'm like, no, I'm Connecticut. The CEO, it was just too close for comfort. That and makes sense. so I kind of had to separate as much as I wish I could still support him. And, and he still helps me out and I still help him out. I could throw him a vendor here and there, but it was too confusing for the public eye. Yeah. And Jay not only attends, too, but he like he's a lot. Like, as far as the barber shows, he's mentored a lot, too. Like, our show wouldn't be without Jay. Um, Rumble in the Rockies, Tennessee. Like, he's he's kind of mentored a lot of the big barber shows that you see now. Jay has kind of been, like, behind it. Yes. So, so along I, – I have a bunch of different people, whether they're financial advisors or real estate. Those are my mentors, right? Because a lot of us in the hair industry make a lot of money. <coughs> but what do we do with it? And when I became – kind of a big name in the industry of like four or five years into my show i was speaking to one of my mentors and uh, he had a similar story in the uh in the insurance culture in connecticut like some people sell all state some people sell state farm and all that different stuff and he started doing these conventions tr even helping train his competitors and we're such a small subculture that has no guidance right like for so many years barbers are just like this is a hustle barber hustle barber this you know they weren't treating it like a career and he said, Jay, the only way you're going to uplift this industry, instead of trying to compete with these guys, because there's some shitty shows going on. And, and, you know, you guys did great from day one. You took some of my guidance. But there's some people that really didn't pay attention to detail. And the, the person that was affecting the most is a, a first-time attendee. Right. So I'm like a barber that's never been to a show. And they go and get a bad experience. Guess what happens? They'll never want to go to a show again. So I'm like, well, if someone gets a bad taste in your mouth in Milwaukee, or even in Salt Lake, and says, I'm never going to go to a show again, I lost a future customer. So the only way to grow this industry as a whole is to take my knowledge on what I've done right and speak to guys like him and help him uplift the show. And, and therefore, we all set the standards high. Right. So, like, I don't believe in competition. I compete with the man I was yesterday, you know. Um, I don't That's think good. they're competition. You know, they're, they'll throw me a bone. I thought, like, you know, I work for Squire. We're going to be there. I work for Babyliss. We're going to be there. Um, I, you know, there's a, I think there's like when them guys are so busy competing with me or Tyler or with anyone else, they just you could you could tell in their show, you know, it's yeah. just not the good the karma the juju is not coming back. So. I feel that. I feel that. I, I think as overall as an industry, we've done a lot better the last few years um, with that. We we had the conversation yesterday with Benson about how you know on the hair side, yeah, the, the hair style side is that you know that's tough. Just so. You, like, because I hear that a lot. Cosmos will come to my show. Just sorry to interrupt you. But yeah, no, they're no, like, no, we go to barber shows. You're all hugging each other. You're all, like, sh giving dap. Mm -hmm. And, like, and you go to these hair shows, and, like, Moroccan oil doesn't get along with balayage people. And, like, it's just, like, <laughs> just snobby. And, and like, the, like, the Cosmos, not only because the men are all over them when they're at my show. Right. But they're, like, kind of, you know, like, wow, it's not as catty. It's not as clicky. Right. And I have been noticing some growth in the cosmetology world. Like, it's starting to, I think COVID might have done that for Open us. Open it up some. Uh, yeah, when we talked to Chris yesterday, it was like 10 years ago, you had, you know, four major brands. You had the Wellers, the Rectons, and whatever. And every year for 15 years, you had the same four people representing on stage with that. Yeah. With that. And then I think a lot of the cattiness came from people trying to fight into those positions that weren't available. You know, and then it kind of got ugly there. And then what happened is, is in 2000, this is all just my theory, by the way. But then in like 2014, once like Instagram and, and social media opened stuff up, now everybody can be a star. Yeah. And that everybody that's seeking for that attention has found it. And I think what that's done is that's really, it's made everybody, it's forced everybody to be a nice guy because there's not room to be a jerk. You know, and if, if not, then the community isn't going to support that. At least that's been, that's kind of what I've seen about it. You'll get shelved. 
I've seen people sabotage their own careers, you know, and I've I've seen it happen. You know, you got to play nice. You I never know who's sitting across that table. You know, that's for sure. If I shit on him about his show, maybe one day he's gonna have a huge sponsor that's got a budget, right? Mm -hmm. That's like I got twenty five grand for Salt Lake City, but we need to do something on the East Coast. Do you know a guy? And if I burnt that bridge with him, I'm not gonna get that call, and vice versa. Yeah, right. You know, so it's you never you never know. Like rest in peace, Curtis the Stash. That's my dude, man. So I'm gonna tell you guys a story about Kurt. Kurt used to bug me. God rest his soul. Jay, you need me to be a judge. I'll be the judge. I'm gonna come with the guys. And this is, hey, you need anything? Any, bro, call me all the time, right? And I'm like, oh my god. And he was one of them guys that always called me, like when I was going up a ladder, <laughs> or like yes. carrying groceries up there. Like he just wouldn't know, like no warning text. Hey, can you talk? He just called me like 8:53 p.m., 8:53 a.m. But I love the guys. You know, wouldn't hurt a fly, right? And uh, he got that role with Ruzel. And Ruzel was on the fence of coming on my show. So it was one of them days he called me, and I was like, I'm going to tell this guy something today. I was having a bad day. I was like, yes, Curtis. <laughs> he said, hey, man, I got some good news. I'm like, oh, what, you're my judge? Like, you know, I was like, What's this? And he was like, I hey, just took a role with Ruzel, and we really want a big sponsorship for the event. And he got me a nice check for, for Ruzel, you know, and shout out to Ruzel, like you said. But had I, like, been a douche to him? Like, had it you know, been one phone call later. <laughs> You never know. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Or, you know, and it's just, you know, you never know. Um, you never know who's going to sit across that table from you. And, and right. it's, it's a huge industry, but it's very small. Right? Well, it's very small once you start playing in it. Yes. You know, like, like we open up the podcast, it's like you go to these shows and you see the same faces at all mm -hmm. the hair shows. And also, those same faces are the ones that are making difference, right? I yeah. think a lot of people that are sitting at home, not, not, not in community. Or um, hating us. Or yeah. hating. Oh, you guys go to them shows. Okay, buddy. Yeah, yeah. It's miserable. Exactly. <laughs> God, miserable. Dude, I do, yeah. Yeah. And I'm out flying. They're all like playing I'm... video games right now. <laughs> Call of Duty with your dog. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> hey, where did um where did like Barber ba Battle start? So real realistically, Barber Battle started in the fifties and sixties with Roffler. You ever remember Roffler? No, 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 no. If you Google Roffler, it Roffler was a you know, like Paul Mitchell has their culture of haircutting. Mm -hmm. Roffler, and actually, yeah, it was probably the 60s because the hippies kind of made the barbering kind of go down. When the Beatles came out, when people started wearing long hair, the barbershops turned to unisex. Roffler was uh, like the Paul Mitchell systems of the 50s and 60s. There was Roffler barber schools across the world. I, 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 I could be wrong because there was a couple in Connecticut, but I think Roffler, don't quote me, all you historians, is like a Chicago-based, like, uh, and they were big in with the unions, and they would compete. There was a competition at the um, in Albany, New York, uh, years ago with this like a big convention they used to do uh, for all the licensed barbers, like the union, mm -hmm. and like a fist fight broke out between some Italian barbers, so they stopped doing barber battles because the ego was there even back then. So can't um, trust those Italians. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they, you know, whatever they got, they got pissed. But I mean, there's been barber competitions going on for a long time. What is that? Were you saying that the barbers were union? Yeah, there's a barber's union for several years. In fact, the barber union in the United States or um, in Connecticut, and so Connecticut had a barber's union. So when you see a lot of barber shops that are closed on Wednesdays, you, you guys still you guys recall that? No. The barber shops used to be closed on Wednesdays. I it didn't know a, that. It was a union law that oh, you could wow. not open up, sometimes even Mondays and Wednesdays. So if you were caught, if you were, so then a lot of shops became non union barber shops. In Connecticut, the guy disappeared to like Italy or Greece with all of the money from everyone's, from the entire union, and just they never found the guy or something. It just disappeared. Oh that, shit! That was the story. Um, I don't, I don't know how true it is, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's true from the old school barbers that told me. But going back to to the barbers, and I, you know, Major League Barbers to me, Nuri West and, and his brother, and then Joe Flano, those are the guys that within Premier and or and within IBS, them, they kind of brought the urban barber battles onto the scene a little little right before myspace times i'd say that's how i found out about barber battles on myspace your space and on, then on myspace and and uh, on my on my space. myspace got it got it got it got it, got it. Yeah. and then um so you see um you do the barber battles at connecticut yeah mm -hmm. what are the what are the uh competitions so many um you know we have a traditional category like pompadours fade and beard speed fader could do the fastest fade 
Uh, we have a tag team, which one cosmetologist and one barber oh, has cool. to implement the best of both worlds. So you have to have some type of coloring, some type of cutting, some type of styling, and the barber and you guys to have an hour to work on a client. A real big one that we did, which we actually gave away a, a car in 2019, was <laughs> duplicate design. Yeah, we gave, a t we gave a 2020 Nissan Altima. So basically, I, I print out a piece of paper. Let's just say this is the design. Uh-huh. You should definitely use that design, yeah, by the way. No one. <laughs> <laughs> this would be easy. They do this in Army. <laughs> so basically, they would, um, they have an hour. They have no idea what they're going to get. So they sign up, and I put it on this LED walls and on the screen, and then I give them a black and white, and I give them, I give them two different versions, like a, um, a like an X-ray type version of it, so uh -huh. you can see it like in two different elements, and then they have an hour to duplicate what I give them. And whoever wins the, the grand prize. One year was 10000 This year was a gold uh, CT Barber Expo medallion. Last year was a Rolex. So that's pretty much like the heavyweight round. That's dope. Yeah, so. And is it, so is it is it one design that everyone does and then you judge everyone the, has, the yes. same design? There's only one winner. So there's, there's about 25 competitors and you, everyone has to do the same design. And I have a tattoo artist, a barber that specializes in designs, and a, a representative from a clipper company, and then a tiebreaker. But... The tattoo artists, like literally every single, so this circle has to be symmetrical with this circle. Everything has to be dead on. Those point. are your judges. Yeah, for this. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so how uh, do you how do you become a twenty five? Uh, like what do you mean? You said that there's twenty five competitors. You just sign. You pay. Go online and sign. Sign up and compete. And bring a model. Up. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, yeah. I feel like out of out of any show, he probably has the the most like craziest prizes I mean, I feel like well, I giving away a car yeah yeah i mean yeah i haven't heard of that from any show i go to a lot of shows i ain't never heard someone giving yeah. away a car it's like next level you have to like it's i wish i was jay minors because when you say your name's major <laughs> you got to do everything freaking major like you got to do it outside the park <laughs> jay, welcome jay, jay minors like, yeah, shitty show <laughs> hey what do you win this year on Aquafina <laughs> in a hair industry sticker. You know? And I've seen that at hair shows. I've seen trophies smaller than this. Oh, like, my oh gosh. My. You know what? You, I'm going to shameless plug here for just a second. But you were talking about, like, first-time hair showers. And we just did our show. We did Presley Poe and Friends at the beginning of April. And, and, and your friends over at... Babelis, 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 Babelis. They they gave us so much swag to give away. We had we had a clipper cat set, we had a trimmer set, we had the like the the barber bag, yeah. the black barber bag, and we had and we had a flat iron. And and my joke was like, if you're a first time hair show, you're gonna be so disappointed when you go to hair shows now because this swag is legit. It was like seven hundred fifty dollars. Bro, my swag bag, same thing. Like we gave away a clipper or a trimmer this year, so you had like a two hundred dollar item in your swag bag. And I, I told Baby, I'm like, what are we going to give out next year? <laughs> like, fuck me, like yeah. uh, fuck a car. All inclusive, <laughs> all inclusive trip to Bermuda and your swag. But I don't know. Like, what are we going to do? Like, how are we going to top this? I know, right? That's, I had the same thought. Like, if they disappear, like, what are we going to do? We give away a hair distress yeah. sticker and an aquafina is what we're going to yeah, do. For real. <laughs> mini ones, too. Mini water. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, so, um, edit mark if we need to. I heard you're for sale. Is that true? My show? Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Uh, the last thing I would want to do, like, it's tiring. Like, I am, I'm tired. And, yeah, I get it. And I have a lot of endeavors. Um, every show, I buy a piece of real estate with the profit from the show. or put it Like a positive. literal piece of real estate. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. Because, I, you know, shows are volatile. Like, anything could happen. Um. The world went from, you know, brick and mortar to click and order during COVID. And one thing you can't buy online is a haircut, right? Like, not yet, right? Not you yet. can buy hair products. Well, we saw that little robot running yeah. around, that little security yeah. robot running around. I don't know about time. that. I don't know if I get a haircut by a robot. But, you know, <laughs> like, uh, we were really worried um, in my attendance, you know, for the first year back from COVID. We were really worried about, you know, hair shows dying. You know, because everyone orders online, and you, who can compete with Amazon? I mean, you order something in 25 minutes, it's at your door. But I think we're such a strong subculture that's like, you got to, like, touch. We got, like, we're just, gotta we're it such up. intimate yeah. people that I don't think that, like, this is our one getaway, right? Like, to get away from our freaking clients, to get away from our shops, and to, like, feel and test the new products. Because 
I don't know about you, but I mean, online shopping, you buy a shirt for $160 and it never fits and then you never ship it back. Right. You know, so it's like, I still think that we have a good chance, but what are we going to give the people that are going to fly here? Like, what are we going to give our spectators? We have to create an experience for them. And I think that's what us as show promoters and those people, like we really have to provide an experience or they're just going to watch it virtually. Because there's some people that like, they got used to COVID. They like Zooms. I, fucking, right. I hate it. But is, there, uh, but is there a market for that for you as well? I don't like it. Because I like, I like human interaction. No, no I, I get that. But I mean, if you're selling, how many tickets do you sell like, at Barbican? Uh, Connecticut, Barbara. Connecticut. Oh, Damn it. Come on. Sorry. <laughs> Fuck. I hate that. See? See how easy <laughs> it is? So easy. Um, so <laughs> this year, I thought I, like, I had like twelve to 14,000 attendees. Supposedly, Squire had this counter and said we did close to 18,000. But I don't know if they were getting people that were exiting as well. Right. So I really have to look into that because Squire's like, you did close to 18,000 this year, Carvel from Squire. But I was like, I didn't see that many numbers. But just like the Saturday of my Barber Grammys from 7 p.m. till 10 a.m. That's when I get my daily update from Eventbrite. Oh, right, right. We sold 1,188 tickets in one in less than 18 hours or 15 <sighs> hours. Nice. It was crazy. Like I woke up that morning and I was like, that's my like a 10:05 a.m. for some reason they send me the update and I'm like, oh great. And then some days I'm like, oh shit, we could have done better. That night I was like, oh shit. But I think a lot of people have FOMO because they were seeing everyone like, right. oh, this guy's there. This guy's, he went live. This one's there. We're going to buy tickets. And then this, the tickets are just raining in. So I don't even remember what the question is. because The ADHD. question, well, I was, I, was, I was setting you up. And like, so if you were to sell those 11,000, oh, 15,000, yeah, yeah. like, yeah. would you be opposed to like adding a virtual element to it? Even if you well, just we, already we sold Well, we did out? YouTube live this year. I mean, I wouldn't mind, but like, here's the thing. A lot of people don't realize like event coordinators, uh, are favored if you're selling out hotel rooms, mm. if people are drinking and eating the food and beverages. Mm. Yep. All the neighborhoods, all the hotels in the area make money. All the restaurants make money. I have people come up crying to me. They're, like, I go to restaurants in downtown Hartford. People will refuse to pay me because of how much revenue I bring that weekend every year in my neighborhood. You mean refuse to let you pay? Re refuse to let me pay for right. food. And I'm like, what do you mean? I just want to support you. And they're like, bro, you... Your crowd that are so best the note tippers. is if you're gonna go out to dinner, go out with Jay Major. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta realize, like we we live off of tips, right? We live off of customer sure. service. Like I'm sure you're guilty of it. Even if I have bad service, I give a good tip. So we just had a conversation with one of the waitresses here the other day. I was like, "Do you like when we come? And do you like when hairstylists and barbers come in?" And she goes, "I like most of you, <laughs> and I get that too." Yeah. But she also said that that we by far are the best tippers of the oh, year. Oh yeah. yeah, I've heard that know. from multiple hair shows. Every, like, yeah. And that's the thing, like, we're bringing revenue, like, I'm in the state of Connecticut, which, like, no one wants to go there. Like, like we lost our sports team. Usually, if you have a concert, it's when you're on your way down in your career when you come to Connecticut. Like, Britney Spears after she shaved her head. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> Bald Britney. Yeah, in sync now that they're 52. You know what I'm saying? In like, sync and walkers. Yeah, like, so I bring a lot of economy to the state. And, you know, as far as me being up for sale, um, I'm a businessman, right? And, and I do hold this show you know, dear to my heart. And I've sure. been in negotiations with a couple of different people. And the worst thing I would, would, what I would hate to see is it lose that energy. Cause like, if you could, this year was, I don't know, was it like a different energy? Oh, Joe, it, it was, the, yeah. You could feel the love in the air. Yeah, it was, it was nuts. Like from the tat guy with tattoos on his forehead from LA, it looks like a Chicano gangbanger right. to like a pink haired barber from Oregon being in the same room, hugging each, like, it was just, the energy was amazing. And I would hate to ever go too corporate, but like as a businessman, when it's high, that's when you got to sell, right. not when your numbers are down. Like when right. you're hot, that's when you want to sell. So ideally, um, everyone knows that if I go and the show goes, like if I go, the show goes. So yeah. they, they, whoever wants to buy it, obviously wants to keep me on board. Of course. Me as the entrepreneur I am is like, I don't really want a boss. So what are they going to make me do? I just need to alleviate. I feel as if I've grown this so big that um, it's hard to really contain it. Like, I don't think I'm not, I'm, I have an eighth grade education. Thank God I passed the Barber State Board. You know what I mean? Right. And like, I don't know if I have the capacity and I've been hiring people. But, you know, as anyone knows, like in this workforce nowadays, especially tech people, like, they, they're really good at invoicing, but they're not good at executing, like, waiting for a video from a videographer, like, 
oh yeah, I'll get it done in 24 hours. And nine weeks later, you know, you're waiting for a video. You're like, what 24 hours? Yeah, like 24 hours in Bangladesh. I don't like what you're is this right. 20? So um, yeah, I, I just I just I'm formulating the right team to you know help scale it. Next year, I'm putting a lot more money into productions. Um, I I I would like to ideally sell it with someone that that's going to work nice with me, and uh, you know. If that is the case, I would, I would like to do that and invest a little bit more real estate, spend some more time with my my, my family. And uh, I'm doing some stuff in Latin America with Babyliss. And I think that the non-compete from a certain amount of mileage, mm -hmm. I'll do it in another country, just do a smaller scale so I could still be in the mix a little bit and then just sell my shows and just cash out, go fishing a little more, enjoy life. Are there That's are a fun. lot of buyers for shows? There are. There's a couple. Yeah, I mean, we're at Premier. Informa brought, bought Premier. They're, they own more shows. They own a yacht show. They sold one in Dubai. They own the Miami Mot yacht show. They're really good guys to work with. Ed's a great guy. You know, it, I'm working with Premier now. Um, my mentors became my coworkers. You know, wow. the Bronner brothers. The, these are people I look up to. These are people that I take little elements of their show and add it. Me and Ed bounce ideas off one another. Sometimes the student becomes the teacher, right? You know, with CT, man, whether you sell it or not, I really hope the energy stays the same, kind of like what you were saying, because I was actually having this conversation with, the, uh, like, Habibi and a few other people. We were at the show, and it's really, and then Jay knows this, but it's, it's changed so many people's lives, including myself. Like, my partner, Mike, I met him at CT. Like, mm -hmm. CT has changed so many people's lives. So I hope if you do end up selling it, I hope that um, the energy stays there, because it's, it's, yeah. it's just, yeah. I would almost want us to keep being a martyr and sacrificing my health and life. <laughs> Your ankles, my <laughs> ankles, like to not, to not lose that, you, you know, and like, because barbering saved my life, like truly saved my life, and I don't know if we're getting that. No, deep no, let's into get, it, yeah, no, let's yeah. go, let's go there. I mean, I learned how to cut hair incarcerated. Um, you know, I was stabbed and and I died. I was brought back to life on the operating table twice, and uh, when I was my te my I would say I always say my fifth grade or sixth grade teacher said you're gonna be dead or in jail by the time you're 18. By 17, I died on the operating table, and I spent my 18th birthday incarcerated. I got my GED from adult ed. So I had an eighth grade education. Never really did good in high school because I was so busy, busy running the streets and stuff. And um, I learned how to cut hair and, and incarcerated because my parents are old school Portuguese. They're like, you do the crime, you do the time. We're not sending you a penny. So I made I was I always had a mustache since I was twelve because I was Portuguese <laughs> and uh, eleven. So I would cut the guy's hair in there, and I should have went back to jail for the haircuts I was giving, <laughs> or under the jail. And um, and I learned how to cut hair like because it was very repetitive, right? right. There's like four hundred men in a dormitory, and you're just cutting all day. And I actually had like an altered pair of Norelco jail trimmers. Um, they're like trimmers, and you hook up a battery pack. It was like some the most ghetto setup you could think of. But I got really good, and um, I decided to pursue it. You know, with my going back and forth, and I dealt with addiction. I've been in recovery now, going on twenty years. Well, ninth, the July eighth will be nineteen years clean. Congrats, brother! Thank Congratulations. you. And uh, so, you know, um, I went through a lot, but barbering like literally gave me this input, you know, or output, so to speak, um, and was able to like kind of still be a hustler, you know, and still be able to use my entrepreneur spirit to build clientele and i mean i started you know working in the hood the same hood i grew up with then i moved and then you know opened my first barber shop started with three guys seven guys 12 guys went to 14 guys then i knocked down a wall bought the pet store next door got to get rid of reptiles in the walls and shit <laughs> and then uh no, my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> had 22 barbers operating for 11 years straight which is hard to have 22 people get along at all times oh same same 22 one wow. yeah i'm the type of guy like more roofs more leaks so like i know guys that were like trying to compete with me they're like dude i'm on my seventh barber shop now he has one right because i'm like you have seven shops and i got more barbers than you but you got seven rents seven toilet paper rolls seven paper towel rolls seven landlords se seven landlords <laughs> seven, seven air conditioning systems seven heating systems like you're just asking to burn out but he was so busy trying to compete with me and i'm like i'm paying one rent i got a sweetheart deal here i know the guy that owns the building and I'm pulling in freaking what you're making in all of your shops underneath one roof. Right. So, you know, I, I started started doing that. So the passion really comes with, like, this shit saved my life. Literally, say I'd be dead or in prison. Like, my friends are just coming home from doing 25 years in federal prison or murders. Like, I was with some rough guys. And, you know, 
and thank God for barbering. That was my channel, you know. It's amazing how uh, how often that's come up on the podcast, you know, whether hairdressing or or, or barbering. Just like what a what a, I think Robert Cromans calls us the industry of misfits, right? For real, and you know, yeah. it, it, it it really is, you know. And I mean, uh, Tony and I are the same. I don't know where we would be. I don't know what we would do if it wasn't for the for the hair industry. You know, it's it's been it's it's, it's been incredible. You know, I I don't I kind of wish we could like outside the industry we could kind of people understood that. You know how many people were are, are saved and, and, and were saved. There's, there's so many people in this industry that, that you know really needed it, and I think that's what gives us the compassion to be the therapist that we are, mm. being so well versed, being behind the chair. I mean, how many st- I've got here for weddings and three months later for divorce court or for funerals and for you you name it. You know, you really have to have thick skin in this industry. You know, you but even to that, I mean, like we. I've been in, I've been in the industry for thirty years. Like we grow with people, you know, like yeah. like people that whose hair I did in elementary school, I just did for the wedding, or or yeah. you're doing for or their kids, you know, their kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's so it's so crazy how how we have those relationships too, and like how underrated those relationship those relationships are. Yeah. You know, so uh, crazy, 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 awesome industry though, right? Like yeah. I just again to the same point, mm-hmm. you know, so crazy. I, I can't believe I made it this far in my career. You know what I mean, but. I think like the biggest portion is and like especially being in recovery is a saying in recovery that says you can't keep what you have without giving it away. Mm. And uh knowledge ha- within, you know, like Confucius and I'm not comparing myself to these people, but imagine they never told told people their teachings, right? Like, you know, imagine uh these great prophets never told people their teachings and they hold it in, would you just going to die with it? Oh, I hate that. I, I hate like that it's too. like uh, what do they call it the gatekeepers right yeah. they just gatekeep all that information and like no one gets uh, yeah that's that's a big pet peeve of mine and and it's it, and again we were talking about earlier i mean i think that th- certainly in the cosmo side that that's changed over the last 10 years or so too yeah. like th- for so yeah. many like what's that color formula you're like eh, you know or like how'd you get there eh, you know? <sighs> yeah yeah you know so i think that and again i think a little bit of it has to do with social media because you're seeing people give so much like yeah. it's really hard to like get something from someone else and then youtube well, university would teach you everything you know? YouTube, listen a lot YouTube of us are regurgitating the same shit <laughs> it's on how well you can relate to that person and how much you <laughs> like them so it, it's it's like I could find out something from you, from you, from you, but I might rather find out from you because I like you as a person. Right. Because a lot of people, listen, this is like not rocket science, right? I mean, it, the, our industry is very similar. It's just the personalities that, that come along That's with it. it, you know? I mean, I'm a, I'm a guy that likes to answer my phone. I'm a guy that, you know, funny story, and I know I bounce around a lot, so whoever's watching this, God bless you. Cause I have <laughs> <really bad ADD. laughs> we got you. But like Tyler, he said, we did this thing where you had to submit a video, right? This is, this is, this, this, whenever I come up with this shit, it backfires on me. So you got to submit a video on why you want to get flown all expenses to Connecticut Barber Expo, right? Uh-huh. And these people gave these elaborate videos, right? Edited and everything, right? And this freaking barber from like Switzerland does this fucking horrible Android Mike Tyson punch out video where he's like selfie and he's like high and he's like, Oz just wants to come to City Barber Expo. This is this going to be great? This is, and like, <laughs> So check this out. So I'm like, fuck, let's rig this or something. So we get someone from Boston so I don't have to pay for flights and hotels. Like, so I'm like telling my boys from Boston, like, enter this and, you know, like, hopefully you'll win, you know? Like, not rig it, but like, let's hope someone local wins. <laughs> so this kid happens to be the barber for like the biggest techno DJ from like <laughs> Europe. And we had a voting system. So whoever got the most votes oh, no. gets flown to Connecticut Barber Expo. So he has two house DJs repost them. Like, vote for my bauble. <laughs> Bro, the kid smokes everybody. So now I got to pay for, like, I got to get him visas. I got to, he's, like, got to get a chaperone. So his, like, mom had to come with him. I had to fly him into New York, get him a car service from New York. Bro, what I thought was going to be, like, a $400 contest and get all these people on social media to post my shit. Turned out to be like an eighteen thousand dollar expense. <laughs> <laughs> Completely backfired. But I'm an honest man, right? And he won. By and his video sucked, and, and like people like him were mad at me. Like I spent four grand on a videographer, <laughs> and this guy won with a selfie video. And there's like I had, I was like, this kid, there's no way he's gonna win. And so because I didn't. So check this out. Initially, his video was so bad, I didn't even let him get on the platform. But then his mom DMs me 
And he's like, no. My, she's like, my son really looks up to you. Like, can you at least just post a video? We know he's not going to win. So I'm like, you know what? I posted this video. <laughs> Because it didn't meet the criteria. I was like, right? Remember the criteria was like, yeah, it has to be clear. The audio has to be good. No yeah. royalty proof music. It, his video was horrible and he won. So this guy <laughs> submits a beautiful video. And like, I actually had time back then to watch a majority of these videos. And I didn't know him from a can of paint. And we're in the elevator at the Connecticut Barber Expo. And like, I, every time I can never get an empty elevator, there's always like 11 barbers in the elevator. <laughs> He was one of them. Did you did you know Mike then? Is that when you met Mike? That's when I met Mike. But Mike was. I thought guy. they were partners then. Yeah, they're no, from no. the same area. So, yeah. so I knew Mike originally. We have a similar background, and Mike goes, "This is Tyler." And I, yeah, that's Tyler Kelber. I said his last name. The kid fucking breaks I was down, hyped. crying. I was fucking. He hyped. literally starts crying. <laughs> I'm like, dude, it's like, cause I'm like, I'm, I look up to Jay. You know yeah. what I mean? So I'm just like, I'm all hyped and stuff. But that's like, it makes, want to want, it makes me want to cry because like. The fact that he was like so humbled that I knew who he was. Right. But that goes to show that he took the time to get a video edited. Even though he didn't win, I know who he is now. And then right. we even did business together in the future. You get what I'm saying? So sure. it's like the full circle on how this show is changing lives. He was just happy I knew him. Now, like, I'm really proud of him. You know, the kid that submitted that video that wanted a free flight hasn't pretty much missed my show ever he's there every year yeah last six years i've been there every single time that's amazing you know what i mean and and like like you can't like everyone's like what's next i was like i don't know but like it, like you can't pay for like the 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 beauty the stuff that happens and the lives that are being changed at my uh, event it just like that's cool man. money in the world camp like because that's that's kind of like i want to sell it. I'm like what, what more what can i do next right you know what i mean like like what more because like I appreciate everyone that comes out, but you do not know the hours I sacrifice away from my family. You do not know what I, tr like me as one human, puts into this show. Like, yes, I have a full staff, and God bless, thank you. My entire team helps me out to the fullest. I would be nowhere without my team because mm -hmm. it's that on-the-floor execution that I need. But let me tell you something. I put in more hours in than all of them put together. And, and, uh, and um, it's just because I have to. You have to. Just, it's but, yours. And, and it's because guess what? Like, when someone, f like, messes up in my show, I'm getting the email and the DM, not, you know. Not Jay Minor, yeah, Jay Majors. Not that Jack email. the videographer or <laughs> Johnny the audio guy. Like, no, I'm the one that's getting the complaint. Well, here's a little advice that I can give you, is that we do a contest with Presley every year, but we just make it in the U.S. so we don't get the Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't. <laughs> Bro, it's, I've like, this couple times I've done these contests, it's like, I think I'm so slick and smooth with marketing and it just, Bam, God's like, oh, bro, you want to do an international show, do you? Like, <laughs> it's going to be international. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> like the content creator of the year won from Africa this year. Oh, he's my from Grammys. Africa. He's from, yeah. Oh, the, wow. What did it cost you to bring in? No, like, he couldn't get a visa to come to my show, so I have to mail him the trophy. And everyone was mad, like, who is this guy? But if you look him up, Safro underscore fades, S-A-F-R-O underscore fades. He gets like 11.8 million views per reel. What? Crazy, oh. crazy engagement. 80,000 comments. What? Whoa. Nice. So he put it in his bio, vote for me. Africa is a whole different continent. Obviously, so like if right. you Americans are, we're, like there's a bunch of people sitting in homes or their huts with Wi-Fi, believe it or not, that have nothing better to do than vote for some guy that they like the videos he promotes. Right. They'll support you in other countries before they'll support you here. You know, everyone, everyone's so caught up in the hustle of bustle. So he won, and a lot of people in that category was like, how'd this guy win? I've never even met him before. I was like, bro, Check look it at out. his votes. <laughs> look, at, look at his reels. Right. That's all it took him to do one would you, video. Would you ever think about using, like, a, a, a judge thing instead of, like, a, a public thing, or you want the public? I've done that. Voting. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm definitely regrouping everything. Um, as a marketing standpoint, when you use the I public. I mean, for 18 grand, I'll be your judge, yeah. bro. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you, you know, look at it, right? Like. How many followers do you have on Instagram now? Uh, like 9,000. So you got 9,000. And uh -huh. let's just say you have 40,000. And you uh -huh. guys both submit a video for the Grammys. And then you post it for three weeks straight every day. Your 19,000 people are going to constantly see my show. So it's his 9,000. Yeah. So if I have 50 people doing it, That's as opposed to judges, I'm getting a lot of marketing and creating the hype around yeah. it. The show is R yeah. ROI. Yeah. So, you know, it's a gift and a curse, though. And then, like, I used to personally, the first two years, I picked everybody. But, like, there's so, there's a lot of movers and shakers in the industry, but guess what? There's, like, the same 30 people that 
doing the same shit every year running this industry. So it'd just be like me one year giving you the trophy and one year you're giving it back to me and one, you know, so right. by me opening it to the public, I've been realizing there's some guys out there that I never even heard of that are crushing it. Sappho. In Sheboygan, I Sheboygan, <laughs> Iowa or wherever, you know, like so there's other there's other people out there making moves too. You just they might be like them silent creepers, you know. Yeah. What's what's amazing to me, especially in the barber world, is that um like I like I and no lie, like barbering wasn't even on my radar until like 2014, 2015, when I watched the uh, the scumbags of uh, of uh, of Rotterdam video that they put together, and I go, this is dope. Like it, it's like when I I started to when barbering was back on, you know, in, in my in, in my and just to anyways, long story short, is to say like now I watch people from like you were saying all over the world, yeah, like like put up this amazing amazing work like. Barbering to me is where the industry is the most exciting these days. You know, it's, yeah. it's, 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 I don't think hairdressing has evolved at all since about 2015 or 16, you know, not at all. That's, that's, that's over, but you know, we're over the waves. We're over the, you know, all that stuff with the barbering stuff is like, and then recently, like even the, like just the last two years or so, like barbers have doubled down on the color, you know? And Let like, me tell you what yeah. barber, you know what barbers really kill it? They're all buying f- f- like, high-end cameras and like they're doing their all their own content yeah like they're smashing i like, think this is a shout out to stay gold because yeah. she's crushing i remember when like we first started I, like first gave her that call to get on the team like she was so timid shaking up there with a the clipper and she just like got in her mojo but like if you go down the show floor right now you're gonna see if there's 400 barbers here this weekend 280 of them have a sick little gimbal or setup yep. Creating content. And a lot of these cosmetologists won't. They, like, they'll have, they might have, like, this dude, get me wrong. You see a bunch of girls killing it, right? Like, mm-hmm. hi, my name is Judy. My day started off with this balayage. This, this, like, I see some girls that crush it. And I, like, right. they're dope. Like, you know, and don't get me wrong. But I just think the barbers are more, and they probably have a little more time on your hand, right? Like, barbers do a 25-minute haircut. Right. When you're you're in a salon, someone's sitting with you for four and a half hours, and you're freaking exhausted. You got color on your hands. <laughs> you can't pick up your phone. You know what I mean? Like, so don't get me wrong, but the barbers are a little more hands-on with their marketing. Right. Am I, am I, do, can I agree? Can you oh, agree I agree. Because yeah. I'm on both sides. I do Cosmo and barber. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's that's why it's so hot right now. And another thing is, is like, men are taking better care of themselves. Because, like, yeah. when I first started going to salons with tickets for my barber expo, I would get, like, these stuck-up Connecticut hairdressers. They'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, honey. I'm not going to your little show for $20 haircuts. I just did a 300 dollar balayage you know and i'm like but that same woman now is like oh my god my client keeps coming in with her husband but i can't do his beard what clippers do you use or do you put color in the beard do you like so we're starting to work together better so then my barbers are like i can't color for shit so can you help me color then i'll teach you how to do a beard and i think like if we keep doing more of that because hair is hair right customer service is customer service that's it and at the end of the day, um, I believe that if we all start working together instead of being like, because I know barbers that make a lot more money than Judy that's been doing balayages for 25 years, and they just started, you know. Mm. So I just think a, a perfect storm of marketing yourself, good social media presence, constantly creating content, good customer service and cleanliness is going gonna, is gonna to take you a long way in this industry, you know. That's the win, huh? It's that simple, man. That's the win. Robin? I'm curious to know uh, what you think of if somebody who's like uh, likes throwing events and wanted to start up their own thing. Do you think the market is uh, has room for more shows? Because you kind of said like there's a lot of shows and mm-hmm. out there. You know, yes and no. Uh, first and foremost, I think a lot of people that do not have the proper credentials in their hometown are trying to do these events. Like no one even knows you in your city. And you think you're going to, like, I have a kid that's 19 years old that I taught a class to who went to my show last year. And he's like, his father's got money. He's like, dude, I'm going to rent out the this convention center in Boston. And I'm just like, he's like, how much do you charge? And I tell him my day rate. He's like, oh, we can't afford that. And I'm like, but you could co- afford the convention center <laughs> in Boston? And I was like, like me, I started my show in a nightclub. There's no way I could have started in a convention center. I would have been bankrupt and never even thought about doing a hair show again. Um, I think there is room, but sh- number one, you need, you're going to need a strong budget nowadays. You're going to need a strong following, and you need to at least be get a base crowd of people there. And I, my biggest piece of advice is, like, outgrow your venue. 
Like, have the smallest venue where it's so packed, people are sweating, and they're like, bro, the place was so mobbed, you couldn't even get in. So they're like, hey, hey, ladies and gentlemen, we had to move to our new venue because we outgrew it. These people are getting these massive expo halls, and there's like 17 people in it, and it looks like a freaking bat mitzvah or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like no one's there. You know, it looks like a family picnic, and they're like, tr- then sponsors never come back. Then, But, like, people equate events as being packed as being successful. Some vendors might be like, look, the event was packed, but no one bought anything. Yeah. But at the end of the day, um, there is room, but, like, you have to be a special person to throw events in today's day and age. And why and is that? You got to be pretty good social media savvy, you know. Um, you, have to, you have to know the right people. You have to be able to, like, so, for instance, like, if I wanted to book him for my event because of my personal relationship, I'd probably get him a hell of a lot cheaper than if someone that doesn't know him or vice versa. If they want to book me for their event, I'm going to give them a friends and family price. You know, if I'm like a show coordinator and I reach out and I want to get him and I have a relationship with him, I might not be able to afford to get the influencers I need there, the educators, the LED walls, the screens. So, like, you know, I, like I said, I've, I believe by doing a couple small shows and building your way up and seeing how it's growing every year and how the demand is and, and getting good recap videos to show people there, there is, listen, there's, I don't want to put a, put a cap on anybody, you know, but on the flip side, a lot of corporate sponsorship, a lot of barber, a lot of these big brands, and I'm sure you realize it, they're putting more money in social media than into live events. Yeah. Interesting. Right. So what it is, is if I give you my marketing deck and show you, I did 15,000 people last weekend and he shows you did 5,000 people last year. I'm more likely to get money from that brand. But if you're saying, hey, my name's Fred. I just <laughs> came out with this show. I'm going to do it. We're going to have all these people there. Who, who's Andis? Who's Babeless? Who's, who are they going to give the money to? Right. Me, him, or you? Right. You know what I mean? So unless you have some real strong allies or some proof of concept, they're, they're not going to gamble with you because, trust me, there's some shows that have been around for a while that are saying that there's going to be bodies there and the bodies just aren't showing up. Not there. And these, these guys, you got to realize, okay, so a company gives you 10 grand. It's not a lot of money, right, for one of these big companies. Mm-hmm. They had to fly out their entire team. They had to put them in hotels. They had to give them per diems, day rates. They had to pay for drayage in and out of the facility. They had to pay for lighting, table setup, storage, theft. S- shit happens, right? right? Not getting a package. So, you know, a $10,000 sponsorship at Salt Lake City – from a Chicago-based company could be about a $40,000 event. Right, right. So, you know, if you're in Wisconsin and you want to do this class and you have this great idea, like all these barbers do, they have these great ideas when they DM me and they've never done an event in their life, I, it's going to be really hard for me to get you sponsorship dollars. Right. The best thing that's going to do is having my face on your event to hopefully get some people there. Get some people there. At this very point in my life, not to be... Flexing, but like if if my face is on a flyer, people are like, "Oh, Jay's gonna be there. It's gonna be pretty good." You're gonna be in Baltimore, aren't you? Yeah, Baltimore, my boy Vern. That's awesome. Yeah, we uh, I might see you there. When Vern? is that one? Do you know? It's like, I think it's like the second weekend of August. It was supposed to be the first weekend of August, but it's my son's birthday, and I'm gonna bring. Actually, I got booked, so it's funny. So, it's supposed to, my son's birthday is August fifth. So it's supposed to be August seventh in Baltimore, but my youngest, my Youngest son's birth. My youngest son's bucket list is to go to see the San Francisco Bridge. Mm. So I was like, "Will you bring my son for his birthday?" <laughs> so they're gonna fly me and my son. I'm gonna bring my other son to San Francisco. So Vern moved it a week later so I could bring my son and get it off his bucket list. So By the big, way, you damn, know, you know Jay, Jay just said not to flex, but then he just had a whole show moved because, because, because of his yeah. son's birthday. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, right there. that's the flex, bro. <laughs> that's it, but that's important to me, man. Because no, no, like, I'm not I, making fun of you, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, yeah. sort of. <laughs> well, I mean, well, because Vern wasn't 100% locked in. And, like, would you rather go to Baltimore or San Francisco? I mean, come on. I mean, I live in near Mar- in Maryland, bro. So you're there all the time. <laughs> I'd rather be in San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> no offense. Speaking Shout out to all the Baltimore. Speaking of flex stuff, you know he had his own shoe. You see on I social saw media. I that the show. That's a, that's a different. So, shoe. Someone put a face on his uh, on his yeah. shoe. It was nuts. It was. Nuts. I don't know if I go like yo. Shout out to Bungie Brands. That's my guy. He's a, he started as a barber and he um has his own sneaker. He's a Neiman Marcus and stuff. I don't know if I could rock a shoe with my face on it. No, that's a, that's yeah, that's a different kind of flex. But to get that, that's a next level. Like that's I ain't never got no flex. 
No. You will, bro. You I mean, know. I mean, there's Jay Majors and Michael Jordan. Let's be clear. <laughs> yeah, right. Jordan got nothing on. Him. <laughs> Jordan got nothing on him. <laughs> Have you seen that movie? No, not yet. I want to see it. It's though. good. It's on Prime, by the way. Yeah. You can watch on the plane going home yeah, to idea. Connecticut. It's uh, it's good, man. It's good. I, I liked it a lot. I liked how uh. Nike didn't have any leverage, so they gave up all the leverage. You know. Oh yeah. So Come yeah, on, Air. Don't, don't yeah. blow it up. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm not. I'm oh, not. Yeah, I'm yeah. not. Dude, it's such a good. I'm movie. not. It's a good movie though. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. it. I saw all the reviews, and I'm like, really? I thought it was so good. You know. Yeah. That's crazy. You know, something else you talked about uh, that I feel like uh, it, we're starting to see more and more, and for we want to talk about on our show about as well is you were talking about like selling your business and then get ending up uh, talking about like spending more time with your family and. Um, when you think about like that, that time or like at some point, uh, what and you, if you're gonna sell your show, I guess that sounds like a pretty active thing. And you said you had barbershops and you have suites and Dude, uh, he has a sh- like I wrote this down. He has I had to write this down because he has so much. CT Barber Expo, LV Barber Expo, suites, barbershops, schools, Babylus, and Squire, which is nuts. Like that's just a long list. And of a lot of re- rental property real estate. Oh yeah, yeah. And so then top it off. so we'll. Do you have your end game in mind, like uh, retirement, if you will? I mean, I don't know. I like that word retirement yeah. necessarily. but You know, um, that touched on two things. Let me start with this real quick because you're talking about spending time with my family, right? And because this, no one asked me this yet, but I just really want to chime in on this. Um, everyone asks, how do you find balance? Okay. Unless you work for like Barnum and Bailey and walk that like thin rope. As an entrepreneur... There's no such thing as balance. Nothing. Like, if you want balance, get a job at Kinko's or, you know what I mean? Get a job, like, get a job in a cubicle, work nine to five and come home every day. You know, like, that's balance, right? And there's nothing wrong with people to do that. That's what you want to do. As an entrepreneur, I look at, like, my career as a, as a scale, right? And for the past six months, it's been CT Barber Expo and my family down here. Right. Like I see him when I can see him. I go to my kids games when I can go. Trust me, all the bills are paid. They're taken care of. I FaceTime them all the time, but I'm not there. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm servicing the CT Barber Expo. But like now the show is approaching and now my kids come to the show and they love it. They look forward to it every year and everyone like takes pictures of my sons like they're celebrities. Mm-hmm. They love it. And then we were just in Aruba and then we're going to San Francisco. And then we're doing a show in North Carolina together. And then we're going to our beach house. Like, we're doing, like, so then it's family, family, family. But guess what? My marketing deck comes out. Now it's back to CT Barber Expo. So it's learning how to tip the scales and communication with your significant other and your children. Like, I always tell my boys, like, hey, I love you guys. But I'm doing this for you. Like, both your college's funds are straight. Like, daddy doesn't have a retirement. Like, I do have a small 401k with Squire. But my real estate is going to be my retirement. And I'm hoping that my work ethic is grooming them to take care of my empire because the worst thing you could do, like, I'm the first person, like, I'm the first millionaire, I'm sure, in my family that I I would think so, you know, not Mm -hmm. like, and who's going to maintain my legacy? So I'm hoping that my work ethic shows these boys like, hey, dad was a hardworking mother effort, you know what I mean? And we have to keep this on. Um, My youngest son seems like he's going to be that one. My oldest is a little more. He seems a little, like, uh, more entitled than my younger one. My younger one's, like, begging me to sweep my barbershop and stuff. So at least, you know, maybe my oldest son will come around. He wants to be, like, a fashion designer. And I'm like, cool. You want to you design your own clothing line? First, I'll put you in business school and mar- teach you business and marketing, which by the time he leaves there, he's not going to want to sell T-shirts, right? Right. So then we'll get you into that. When it, when it comes to coming back to, to your question, when it – what was the question? Was I like, mean, that was your basically my question, like finding a w- retirement. Okay, there like, we go. The retirement. Yeah. There you go. The retirement. My retirement will be these pieces of real estate, whether I sell them off, because I'm sure my real estate's going to devalue with these next couple of years with everything that's going on. Right. right. But what goes up must come. Real estate always comes back up. So in my end game, I use my real estate as a tax write off because, you know, commercial real estate and all. And, um, my end game is to hopefully retire with some money in the bank and with these properties making passive income from all my different properties. That's why I told you in the beginning of this podcast that I buy a property after every show. So my show will always pay me back even if I sell the show because I buy a property with, with, with my show. So for a lot of barbers and cosmetologists, like the old school barbers where I'm from and where a lot of people are from, Chicago, 
a lot of these Italian immigrants, because the Italians were really big in a barbering scene, right? And uh, the Turkish and stuff. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these Italian immigrants would rent a barber shop from their landlord and then buy the building. And there's always apartments upstairs. And then they would buy the building next door. And that's how they retired. I know barbers that own streets in Connecticut. And a lot of us have took, gotten away from that. And, the, you know, the urban barber thing. They're so used to renting that uh, I try to say it's big to, to, to own the land. Because, like, if you own a barber shop, you own the name. You're not yeah. a barber shop owner. No. And if your landlord wants to double your rent or make your cam charges go up every year like they do, you could be forced to closing or losing profit. So do you really own the barbershop or do you own the pole that's spinning outside? You know, do you um, you, you were talking about mentorship and people reach out to you. Do you have do you have people or a lot of people reaching out about that? Like like like, hey, Jay, w can you walk yeah. me down and help me with real estate and stuff like that? Or, or? I do like all around. It's just unfortunately, I, I've, I'm just so busy that I haven't found the right way to help these people. So I feel like I'd be depriving them because like I'm a consultant. So I consult for Babyless, I consult for Squire. Mm -hmm. And then between that and my show and like everything's kind of like everything's kind of inner circle revolves around these shows. Like right now I'm at Premier Orlando promoting my shows while I'm working for Babyless. Right. While I'm emailing Squire. Like right. that's been my form of the success because everything revolves around here. Um, it would it would suck for me to take someone underneath my wing when I barely have time for my own kids. Mm. So I think I like going back to retirement, like if I do sell some stuff, I can maybe write a book, right. maybe come out with my own product line because I've seen so many people fail. Like if everyone's like, Jay, why don't you have a, you're, you're popping. Why don't you have a pomade? Because I'm like, well, because there's 350 pomades that come to my show every year. Right. And they're going to be like, dude, that's my competitor. Why am I going to want to go to his show? Yeah, He's crushing. Right. So like I got to stick to what I'm good at and, and, you know, like, I'm not a very religious person, but I'm spiritual. One of my, my boys, Tyler from the Tennessee, he's, like, really, really religious. He's a Christian, and I've been trying to do my thing with church, and he's like, you got this God, got this gift from God of, like, attracting people to you, and you have this customer service gift, and you have this authority. Like, <laughs> he tried ordering, the, ordering these sandwiches for all my staff at, like, 6.30 in the morning at the casino, which I order every single year at 6.30 in the morning to feed my staff Sunday morning. And they're like, they said no to me. So I went down there and I ordered them. He's like, you see, man, that's what I told you. You got that authority. You went there and you ordered the sandwiches and they gave them to you. The lady wouldn't even give me the time of day. So, like, I, I just got to, like, I don't even, sometimes I don't even think I deserve the blessings I got. You know what I mean? But there's just got to be, like, I truly believe that I'm as successful as I am because I'm helping so many others. Boom. So I have to just be able to receive it be grateful for it and and just keep helping others and you know what like i could sleep at night man like i did not like make it i did not the connecticut barber did not make it by stepping on people's necks boom you know what i mean i love that jay we got to wrap up here okay. where can people find you where can people where where can people reach out for their real estate mentoring <laughs> dude i got this major mindset instagram i got podcasts i got all this shit but i have no time to do any of it but um, you can find me, J-A-Y underscore majors on Instagram, ctbarberexpo.com. Uh, there's email addresses there to get a hold of uh, me or someone from my staff. If you are a brand that wants to get in front of thousands of uh, barbers from all over the world and you haven't been to CT Barber Expo, you're doing yourself a huge injustice. Um, and if you are a just barber or cosmetologist that's watching this and real just – sick of the in and out day in the life of the shop and and you're not going to these hair shows and you're not networking with people learning how to wake other sources of revenue learning how to take your career to that next level you're doing yourself a huge injustice by not coming out to salt lake if you're within a couple hour radius of a flight or a hotel or whatever it may be to come to these events and you're not you're, you're just you're only playing yourself you know Amen. and that's a, so uh, that's my strongest advice to you guys participate this is not a spectator sport or, you know, and there's nothing wrong with servicing clients, but you're just going to be stuck behind the chair until you have scoliosis and carpal tunnel and all types of shit for the rest of your life unless you're finding other ways to make passive income, and it's out there. Awesome. Mr. J Major, Tyler Kelbert, Mr. Robert Lawrence, thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off.
Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating, and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Street on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.